بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين After this introduction we want to uh, talk about Imam Mahdi أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف in the Quran First, we should know that in addition to the idea of Imam Mahdi or a savior in the Quran or having good end for humanity at the end, all these things which are connected with the doctrine of Al Mahdi, we have many verses of the Quran about Imam and if you want to see Imam Mahdi how he is portrayed in the Quran you have to consider also you have to consider also the verses of Imam and it would make it then very natural very easy to understand that there must be an Imam for every age uh, in the book Lessons on Imam and Wilaya, uh, we have chapter 9 about Imam Ali alayhi salam's successorship in the Quran, which starts from 113 till 152, and also before that about Imam in general. What are the verses about Imam? So I am not mentioning those verses here I mean I'm not discussing but please uh, remind yourself or familiarize yourself with those groups of some of them are not just one some are groups of verses some of uh, one some are many uh, for example that hawk belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Amr belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala etc we are now talking specifically about Imam Mahdi and end of time in addition to those verses about Imam. Before we go into the verses we need to mention uh, some points. I had a discussion many years ago, I think it was 2006, 2007 maybe, that someone was asking some uh, Shia brothers why they believe in Imam, uh, why the name of Imam Ali is not mentioned in the Quran. Imam, you say it's very important. Why Quran doesn't mention such an important topic? They asked me to talk to him. So I said, okay, although I don't like, you know, to debate with such people, but I said, okay. So I told him, before we talk about the Quran, I have a question. If Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells you that Ali is my successor, do you accept or you say I don't accept because it is not mentioned in the Quran? He was puzzled 
because if he says I don't accept Rasulullah then how can he say I am a Muslim if he says I accept Rasulullah then he had to quit his position so he said you are using aql I said okay what is wrong with that <laughs> for him it was a big problem that if someone uses his aql in religion then I mentioned some verses of the Quran that refer to the concept of imama and imam of Amir al in particular but what I want to mention is that we don't need everything to be mentioned in the Quran yes Quran is a book which explains everything that we need Quran explains everything that we need and when we say certainly we don't expect from the Quran to teach us how to for example I don't know make tea or you know how to iron your dress you mean anything that you need for guidance anything you need for prosperity and felicity at least through Zahir al-Quran and Tafsir of Quran we don't expect to know other things of life you know how to make roads and you know build houses etc maybe if we were able to knew uh, all Ta'wil of Quran yes you were able to understand those things as well but at the level of the outward meanings of the Quran and their interpretation we don't expect the Quran explain everything explain biology chemistry uh, physics mathematics no but anything that you need for your guidance anything that you need for self-realization Quran explains Yes, but even these things that the Quran explains are not always dealt with in a detailed way. For example, about Aga'id, there are many things that we learn from the Quran, but there are things that we learn also from Hadith about fiqh sharia there are things that we learn from quran we have about 500 verses of the quran about sharia there are many more that we t learn from hadith from sunnah even our daily prayers which are very very important the quran doesn't mention details how many raka should be every day said how many rakah is fajr how many is zohr asr quran is a book of guidance that explains everything that we need including the one who can be the teacher of it who can exemplify it and apply it and show us the details Allah says to the Prophet that we sent down the Quran to you to so that you explain to people what has been revealed to them if the Quran was a book of you know uh, like you know teach yourself chemistry teach yourself this or that you know if it was like this so that everyone could understand 
why there was a need for prophet to teach them the book kitab, whether this al kitab is quran or general kitab from which the quran is coming why there is a need for muallim why there is a need for mubayyan la tubayyan al nas ma nuzila ilayhim why rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was leaving ummah and departing this world said inni tarakun fikum muthaqalain kitab allah wa itrati so this shows that quran has everything that we need but it has also its own instruction of how to understand it and how to implement it like for example just as an example imagine you buy a machine or computer or anything and then they say these are the instructions for using this and also these are our uh, authorized representatives if you have a question if you have difficulty if you don't know if there are different <laughs> opinions contact them quran says fas'alu ahla dhikr in kuntum la ta'lamun so first we need to establish for ourselves this point that we don't need for any authentic aqidah or any valid practice to be specifically mentioned in the Quran this is not the style of the Quran this is not the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has designed the Quran on the other hand we know that if we follow the Quran with the methodology that the Quran offers then we have answer for everything we would be able to live a life of purity and piety and inner and external peace if we follow the Quran with the methodology that the Quran teaches us another point is that not only there is no such reason and such insistent insistence that everything must be mentioned in the Quran in particular there is actually the opposite some of the things which are very important they are not mentioned deliberately in the Quran in details It's not that the most important things are mentioned explicitly and the less important things are mentioned for example implicitly or just referred to the sunnah sometimes some of the fundamental issues are specifically not mentioned why one is for test Allah has this sunnah that he keeps certain things clear for those who want to find it and at the same time not so clear so that people have to accept it must accept it no he leaves a room for test and trial even for himself Allah keeps some distance you know some philosophers of religion call it epistemological distance if Allah was 
showing miracles every day to every uh, group of people, then 99% of people maybe would have believed in him. But then faith had no value. Evidence should be available, but it should not be so obvious that no one could deny. You must also work for it. You must also stretch yourself. The apple should be on the tree, but also you must stretch your hand. Not that you say, you know, apple should come to my mouth. Ma'arifah should be available, but don't wait ma'arifah to come to, on your lap. This is one point. Test is important. Sometimes in the Quran, Allah says even about ayat mutashabih is for test. Also, Quran is to be preserved. If all details, especially those things which were very sensitive, if they were mentioned, then some people in that time or later could have tried to distort the Quran. You see, some verses of the Quran about Imam and Wilaya are somehow hidden. For example, in Surah Ma'idah, the verses of Ghadir, Al-Yawm Ya'is Al-Ladheena Kafaroo Min Deenakum Fala Takhshawhum Bakhshawn Al-Yawm Akmaltu Lakum Deenakum Wa Atmamtu Alaykum Ni'mati Wa Radhitu Lakum Al-Islam Deena it's put inside a context which is about what is halal, what is haram. There doesn't seem to be any connection to the previous context and next context. Or ayat or tathir, all of a sudden this ayah comes in the context which is about wives of the Prophet. It's everything is plural female pronoun and then all of a sudden becomes male, plural. So if the name of Imam Ali was mentioned, if the name of Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Imam Mahdi were all mentioned in the Quran, if Quran had remained, then there was no test. If Quran had not remained because of this, then we would have lost the Quran. Part of the mechanism that Allah has for preservation of the Quran is this. It's not that only through miracles Allah preserves the Quran. So, we shouldn't expect to find for everything which is important a verse in the Quran or few verses of the Quran that specifically, explicitly mentions that idea or that person. We need to broaden our vision. If something is mentioned in the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, that's enough. If something is compatible with the principles of the Quran, it's enough. But Alhamdulillah, when it comes to the idea of Imama or idea of savior and the final uh, station of humanity. Alhamdulillah, we have more. But I'm saying if we didn't have anything and we just had it in Sunnah, was enough. And also, what makes it easy for us is that when it comes to uh, Imam of Imam Ali alayhi salam, maybe some Muslims have difficulty to accept his Imam, for example. When it comes to Imam Hassan alayhi salam, maybe they accept his Imam with difficulty or they don't accept. You know why? Because they say, okay, Imam Ali was the first caliph, but who said he was the immediate successor? Maybe they have difficulty, some Muslims. 
But when it comes to Imam Mahdi, it's different. You don't find an uh, authentic view among Sunni or Shia who would deny Al Mahdi. To believe in Al Mahdi is not a Shia view, it's an Islamic view. Many, many Sunni scholars have not only accepted this, they have said that this is a requirement of faith in Islam. This is an Islamic idea. What is maybe controversial is about whether Imam Mahdi was born or not. Even here some Sunnis say he was born, maybe majority say he was not born. But this idea of birth. But to believe in Al Mahdi, who is a progeny of the Prophet, who is through Lady Fatima, through Imam Hussein, who would come in Akhir al Zaman. With him, Allah fills the earth with justice and equity is an Islamic idea, not only a Shia idea. So in my words, it's even easier to discuss about Imam Mahdi than proving Imam to non-Shia. And they have so much of hadith. Inshallah, next week we will talk about this hadith. And in particular, I want to introduce to you Muntakhab uh, al-Athar Shar by the late Ayatollah al-Uzma Safi Gul Paigani uh, who compiled this great work where he brings hadith about Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif from tens of Sunni sources as well as Shia sources and makes it very clear that this is an Islamic idea. Inshallah, we'll talk about it. So, with respect to Imam Mahdi, Sharif, we have clear guidance. We don't need to uh, worry about uh, non Shia not accepting this. The only thing is, as I said, some details which are very important for us, but these details would not make the whole concept controversial. Okay, now, with respect to the Quran, in addition to these uh, general introductory points, I would like to also mention that sometimes when we find an idea in the Quran, it is explained <coughs> in a way that we call it in Almul Usul Al Ma'na Zahiri. This means something that is said literally. Or you can say it is mentioned and according to the rules of grammar you can understand it can be nas it can be zahir nas means it's hundred percent indicating one meaning Zahir means there is another possibility, but the common sense ignores other probabilities and says this is Zahir. If it is lower than this, then it's Mujmal, it's ambiguous. So sometimes things are mentioned and the outward meaning is clear. Sometimes there is a need for Tafsir. Tafsir means to unveil, kashful qina'ah, to remove 
hijab to remove the veil to remove the cover but tafsir has always be something that is connected to the text if someone says tafsir of this ayah is this and then you don't know how this person understood it from this text it has nothing to do with the text he said you know i have been inspired you know sometimes some people have this kind of what we call botany tafsir you know they say things that they are not understandable how they understood this they say you know I was inspired I had a dream or whatsoever this is not valid for others if that person had a hujjah that's another thing it's up to him and Allah uh, in the book lessons on knowing the Quran uh, we have a chapter about different types of tafsir and over there I have emphasized that any valid and sound tafsir has to show how this meaning is connected to the literal meaning so that other people also could verify so yes we didn't notice this beautiful point but now that you say yes we can see how this connects with the literal meaning but then we have ta'wil ta'wil can be used in different senses but here what we mean by ta'wil is that something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet and ar-rasikhuna fil ilm those who have deep and strong knowledge they understand we accept what they say because of their authority not because we can ourselves directly understand the same things for example if rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that this verse which is maybe about bani israel or maybe for example about uh, ummah of a particular prophet this is about Imam Mahdi. This is not at the level of uh, literal meaning. This is not at the level of tafsir. It is ta'wil. And ta'wil is something that only those with authority can understand and can explain and we accept. So some of the verses that you find which are applied to Imam Mahdi in Sunni or Shia sources and Hadith are through Tafsir and some are through Ta'wil. I mention few verses because our time is getting over so that you study, you think about it and next session inshallah we start with uh, some uh, detailed discussion about these verses but just for you to you know prepare yourself and if you want to study in advance so one verse which is very important and actually has been explained in more than one place is this verse with some difference in wording huwa alladhi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa din al haq li yudhhirahu ala al din kullih walau karaha al mushrikun we have similar to this so this is in surah tauba verse 33 similar to this is 
هو الذي ارسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله الشهيدا سوره فاتح verse 38 and also يريدون ليطفئوا نور الله بافواههم والله متم نوره ولو كره الكافرون هو الذي ارسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون Surat Saf verses 8 and 9. So, inshallah, we will talk about, as we will study, inshallah, these verses. Also, the famous verse, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَيُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمُ الَّذِ ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ وَلَيُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنَا يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِي شَيْئًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ سورة نور ورس 55 and also inshallah we will talk about the verse ونريد أن نمن على الذين استضعفوا في الأرض ونجعلهم أئمة ونجعلهم الوارثين and maybe some other verses certainly we will talk about ولقد كتبنا في الزبور من بعد الذك أن الأرض يرثها إبادي الصالحون سورة أنبياء so these are some of the verses that if you can study and think about them Inshallah, in the next session, we will try to explain these verses in the light of Quran itself and the uh, uh, teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Ahlul Bayt Alayhi Wasallam. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Thank you very much, Shaykh. You're welcome. Um, if there are any questions, uh, perhaps to do with sure. anything that Chef mentioned today. Um, if anybody would like to ask a question, that's fine. Otherwise, as Chef said previously, if um, any questions that you have regarding this topic, if you could just email them to info at risaladinstitute.org. I wrote the email address in the chat a couple of times. So, um, please, like Chef said, any questions, please email them and they will be fitted in when the specific topic is discussed. Um, sorry, Chef, someone is saying Surah Anbiya. The, is there a verse number? Hmm? Sorry, I closed the notes. Maybe we can send you the references, inshallah, so that you can. Inshallah. Yes, work on. Okay. Thank you very much once again, Chef. You're welcome. Um, Thank you. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you. And inshallah, uh, if you manage to, uh, you know, discuss also with a friend or two friends would be great. And uh, we pray, inshallah, together that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make this, inshallah, experience that we have uh, with each other an example of uh, seeking knowledge but also seeking closeness to him and his hujjah inshallah thank you very much iltimas dua